Okay. So last time we started to look into bending, one of the other criteria when you're designing your member. Remember that we talked about if we have an axial load, how to design it, or what's the deformation. If you have a torque or twisting, what's the deformation, how to design it. And then we look at the bending. If you bend something, what's the deformation? Uh, how much the deformation are the end of it. Now, last I went through the concepts and the equations. Now, uh, today we start to do some examples. I'll give you some idea how we can actually uh, use those uh, formulas. So the first example is that we have a steel bar So we have a steel bar. Like this. And that the steel bar is subjected to moment in. Section for this is like this. Just this point eight inch width. So it says if the yielding stress is going to be 36 so sigma that it yields under that is That's the case. What's the M? So, under what moment, basically, for Y for building? So, under what's the maximum M that caused? maximum aim that caused that to fail. Wouldn't it be the minimum aim? Just because like the least amount of force it requires to fail it. Or the maximum that usually they said what's the maximum load you can put on okay. the on the member. So you know that you cannot load it yeah. uh, over that number. So when you are dealing with the uh, moment problem. The very first thing that we need to find is neutral axis. But everything will be calculated from the neutral axis. So we have to find the, the neutral axis. If you have a cross section, a simple cross section like that, so if I go ahead and draw it a little bit larger, so if the simple cross section like this, You know that the neutral axis pass through the center. centroid. So if you know if you have a cross section like that, know that the centroid is going to be right here. So that's going to be our cross section, and then.
and the maximum distance from the neutral axis would be this. It's a neutral axis. So what's the next thing I need to find? center pass through it and then we need to find the moment of inertia because almost I said all the equation in the bending involve the moment of inertia so how much the moment of inertia above the neutral axis for that rectangle remember that Twelfths of width times height, height squared cubed. cubed. So I would be one twelfths of the width, which is point eight times height, which is two point five cubed. So the I would be. I respect to neutral axis. Mm -hmm. You have to find that I always respect to neutral axis in the bending. For the bending problem, we always find that I respect to neutral axis. <coughs> section like that and it was a B and it was a H and then it was the X Y and then you have the The centroid. So I respect to the x was one third of b h cubed. I respect to x prime was one twelfth of b h cubed. For the y, I respect to y was one third of h b cubed. And I respect y prime was y one twelfth of I said we don't need to memorize it, but because for the rectangle we are gonna use it over and over and over again. We probably gonna anyway. We are gonna memorize it anyway. <coughs> so that's the I respect to the neutral axis. So then I want to find the sigma max. So what was the sigma max? Do you remember? The sigma max was m c divided by i. So the maximum that we wanted is we wanted to be thirty six. So we wanted to be thirty six. Times 10 to the third psi, and then we have the m that we don't know how much it is. The m max, 
the maximum that you can handle. The C is how much? 1.75. On point two five two five yeah one point two five is about two so times one point two five divided by i which is one point zero four two so the maximum moment that this section can handle before it fail would be is it going to be 30,000? Can you check that? So that's the maximum I can put on that before I break it. If I increase the moment from that point, that member would be fair. This is still this this one. If it was for example wood. So one more time, in most of the moment, uh, sorry, the bending problem, these are the things we need to do. The very first step, step we need to find the neutral axis. To find the neutral axis, we need to find the centroid. So usually the first step is find the centroid, find the location of the uh, neutral axis. Then as I said, most of the equation involve I, so most likely we need to find the I. So the next step we have to find the I. And then usually if you find the location of central correctly and calculate the I correctly, the bending equation is relatively simple. Um, for the um, central or like the center point, is the neutral axis always going to be horizontal? Or is there certain cases where it will be going vertical or like it depends on the load. Right now, we assume the load is on the vertical plane. So, so it's going to be like that. Remember, the neutral axis is it's not that so the neutral axis is where the, the strain is zero. Gotcha. So when you're bending it like that, it's going to be somewhere there. But if I'm bending it on that plane, instead of vertical plane, assume I'm bending it like this then the neutral axis is going to be somewhere yeah. there. We'll briefly mention it uh, later on if it's not symmetric on the vertical axis. But remember that the neutral axis, the neutral axis is always where it's going to be the, where the strain is zero. So again, assume we have a kind of beam look like this. Like that. And there's a big 
bending moment that looks like this. So I said if this sigma y the yielding the stress. In and what's the radius of curvature? the sigma equal e epsilon mm -hmm. and e was the large in, in, in a spring the k is the f equal k delta x here is the sigma equal e epsilon so e is like the k in the spring yeah. let's show you how much can it stretch or come The cross section for this Thickness everywhere is So similar to the previous one, again the first step is to find the centroid. 
again because it is a uh, it is kind of rectangle so the central is going to be right in the center so the central is going to be here and then that's going to be the neutral axis so the centroid is there so we know there is a neutral axis now we want we need to find out the So basically, as we assume it's full rectangle, the outside, we calculate the moment of inertia for the full rectangle, assume it's completely full, and then we subtract the uh, moment of inertia for the whole from that. So we want to get the moment of inertia. dimension of the inside? Uh, 2.75 by 4.5. It's going to be... Is it 2.75? Minus one twelve so the two point seven five times four point five Q. So I would be I have it here. Twelve point nine seven.
I'm happy to be like your heart. Yeah. 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 So, it's pending like that, uh, and want, now we want to find out how it's going to fare. So, the next thing is that I want, I have to find out how much is the allowable signal. So, I have the factor of safety is 3. So, how is the signal allowable? Factor of safety was what? Can you remember? Three. Or are you like guessing for the equation? That's the equation. Oh. Um. But sigma u divided by sigma allowable, yes? The factor of safety, the FS was sigma u. Maximum we can divide it by sigma allowable. Therefore, three would be the sigma u is how much? Sixty times ten to the third divided by sigma allowable. So sigma allowable would be. So that's the maximum that we can find, that maximum that we can have. Now the next thing is that we okay, want to find the sigma max or how much is the basically m max. Let's find the m max. We know that the sigma max is m c divided by i. equation that we have there. So the maximum we want to have is 20. 20 times 10 to the third. It's going to be the m max that we want to have. Multiplied by c. How much is c? So the maximum M we can have with the factor of safety of 3 Here's the question. What if that cross section was not symmetrical along the y axis? So, 
my question is that what if the neutral axis is not right at the center? For example, what if the, you had the shift that the neutral axis was here? Or here? Then what would you see? What, you said what would we see here? How would we solve it? No, what, because right now, the distance from here to the top is the same as the distance to the bottom. But what if it was not? What if the neutral axis was down here? Wait, could you just make a composite, basically? No. As, assume you have the shape that... Uh, somehow the C would be down here. We'll get it in the next example, but... Then you, it's correct, you have two C, one for the compression, one for the tension. And then the sigma max for the compression and the sigma max for the tension would be different. Here, because it's bending, so the bottom would be in the tension, the top would be in the compression, the sigma max both in both cases would be the same. And if you have the material like the aluminum or steel that behave the same in the tension and the compression it doesn't matter. But you, if you have a material that behave differently in the tension and compression, then you are going to get two uh, different C. If it's a material that is, for example, a steel that doesn't matter tension and compression, the largest one is the one that we are going to use. Got it? And it wants the road. The uh, road is fairly straightforward. But the radius of curvature equation. Under these circumstances, under these conditions, if we say that the factor of safety is going to be 3, so how much is going to be the maximum uh, moment for the factor of safety of 3, then the, uh, this equation would be 1 over rho would be m, which is under 3. So if we do that, the, if I have them all correctly, the row should come out as 13.5 inches. Thank you. 
So one more time, again, the bending problem, we need to find the centroid so you know where your neutral axis is located. Then you need to find the moment of inertia. And then when you have them, you can just simply substitute it into the bending. So So the next problem is can we have Remember, similar to what we had before. And this time it's bending downward. of that
Sigma max, what's this? Sigma max for compression. Sigma max for tension. So now we have a shape that's not what of the known shape. We cannot use the, uh, the, the table we have for the centroid or the moment of mass. So we have to calculate both the centroid and the moment of mass. So first I'm going to start with the centroid. How we calculate the centroid? So I, I need to know where it's going to be. The uh, neutral axis location. So if I want to work with that, first of all, I have to choose the x and y axis so I, I know uh, where it is. For the y, we don't care right now where the centroid in the y axis is because it has a set symmetry. We know that it's going to be right in the middle of that. But we want to know where it's in the x axis. So, I'm, so if this is the x, and this is going to be the y. So I know that centroid is on the y-axis uh, somewhere, correct? So what I need to do is that, again, I cannot work with that, so I have to break it into the known shape. So I'm going to break it into two shape from this point. So then I have the centroid here for the bottom shape, and I have the centroid here for the top shape. So for the one, that's two. So this is gonna be, how much is this distance? It's gonna be 20, correct? How much is this distance?
So, so how did you how did you find this the same problem? Remember what was the centroid if I want to find it? What was the y bar? The x bar I know it's zero, but y bar. Sigma x area x tilde area. Y tilde A. I'm gonna <coughs> calculate them here. So I need the y i a i, and then so I need the y i. I need it. So for the first one. For the one, or for the area one. How much is the y bar? Y tilde is 20. Okay. For the second one, it's 50. Then I need the A, I. So for the first one is, how much is that? Is it 30 by 40, correct? 30 by 40. Or the second one is 90 by 20. Then Y tilde I A I. So it's going to be. 20 times 30 times 40 is going to be 50 times 90 times 20. Agree? So now I need to add them. So if I put the sigma, add these two together and give it to me. So now I can find the y bar. So the y bar is going to be 114,000 divided by 3,000. This would be 38. 38. So it means that the C would be sitting, if this is 40, it's going to be somewhere here, correct?
So now I know where look where my neutral axis is located. Right? So now I have the same product. What, what's next? I do need. So I need the moment of inertia. Again, look at that shape. It's not a regular shape, so I cannot find the moment of inertia of grid. I have to calculate. So moment of inertia. Do I find the one of inertia? <laughs> so this is my shape. So I want to find the moment of inertia about the centroid. So if this is my centroid, about the neutral axis. So that's going to be the neutral axis. I want to find the moment of inertia about that. Again, I'm going to find it, it make it two sections. So I'm going to make it section one and two. So it's going to be one and two. So that's the centroid for here and that's the centroid for here. So I can I can find the moment of inertia about the centroid of the rectangle, correct? Yeah. If I go ahead and say it's a x prime of one and that's a x prime of Two, I can find the moment of inertia about the, uh, for the one, about the x prime one, and for the two, I can find it about x prime two. Now, how do I find it about the neutral x? Just solve for the moment of inertia of both. So I can find it for the bottom one. Mm -hmm. I can find it for the top one with that equation, one twelve of B times HQ. And how, how I transfer it to the neutral axis. Isn't it like you draw the shape separately and then like it's like B by like the neutral axis to the to the new X. So yeah, that's correct. So remember, we have to find the, new, the moment of inertia for each rectangle, yeah. then transfer it to the neutron axis. To transfer it to neutron axis, we add the A times distance between the axis to the power of two A B squared. So it was the I respect to the central axis. Then plus <coughs> I squared that the equation we had it before. So basically, if I want to find it, I have to go ahead and first find the distance between each of them and neutral axis. So, how much is this distance? Uh, I'm gonna <coughs> so, how much is... Let me extend that. So I'll put it here, this is a neutral axis. It's 18. Um, x bar 1, or like x prime 1, and then 
Is it 18? Yeah, and I would say 12 if we're doing absolute values, or negative 12 if we're not. No, just the distance. And then 12. So, D2 is 12. D1 is 18. Those are correct. So then I have the equation, remember that was the I about the neutral axis is the sigma uh, I about the x prime about the axis going through the centroid plus the A D squared. So For the so I about the neutral axis is going to be the I is prime for the first one plus the A1 D1 squared plus I for the X prime 2. How much the I for the moment of inertia for the first one? How much is that? 112 so. The area is 30 times 40 times the distance for the first one was um, 18. 18 squared. For the second one is plus 112 so the width is 90 times the height which is 20 cubed plus the area 19 times 20 times the distance between the axes is 12 squared. So I about the neutral axis would be <coughs> 1 to calculate the sigma max. So if it is bending like that, so we, I know the sigma max, what was the equation for sigma max? M C divided by I. Correct? This is the shape I have. It's going to be like this, correct? So 
where would be on tension and where would be on compression. Anything above, almost correct, anything above the neutral axis would be in tension. tension. Anything below the neutral axis would be in compression. <coughs> so, uh, so what I have here, the, this one is in tension, this part is in compression. And the neutral axis is somewhere here, close to the top. I agree. Now, <clears throat> so if I want the would be the M would be M would be three thoughts the I would be eight six eight times ten to negative nine how much the C Tension. Oh, for the tension. Twelve. Oh, got the least. Um. So it's twenty. <coughs> there. So it's going to be twenty-two, correct? It's going to be twenty-two up there, and then it's going to be thirty-eight. Down here. So it's going to be times twenty two millimeter or <coughs> twenty two times ten to the negative three. would be So, and then we have the maximum compressive, compressive stress. So the sigma max for compression. Moment is 
time the C, the maximum distance is going to be 38 times 10 to the negative 3 and the moment is going to be 8, 6 8, 6, 8, yes, 8, 6, 8 8, 6, 8, 6 8 times 10 to negative 9 Sigma max under pressure would be so the book says hundred thirty one point three. So the only point is that here when this is under compression the compression stress is And the radius of curvature is that equation. So let's substitute it in that equation. So again, if you see the bulk of the calculation is the static spot. Find the centroid, find the moment of inertia. The strength of material is just this. tension is just telling us how much tension can be applied before that top half fails basically or like the part that's above the neutral axis um, fails and then the max compression is how much before the bottom part fails or I guess it wouldn't matter if the top half fails first if you want to design it and if it's for example assume it's a steel that behave the same in the compression and tension, then you have to find it and go set, hey, if it's gonna fail, it's gonna fail under compression, not under tension, because the compression is gonna be not larger. Uh -oh. the, the absolute value of that is gonna be larger. Because here you have 130, here you have 76. So that, if, if it's gonna fail, it's gonna fail right at the lower edge of that here. So if you want to design it, you have to design it for the compression, not for the tension. Um, I thought that this number was the number that, how much force could be applied before it fails. No, these are how much, how much tension you have under that moment. Okay. So if you have that moment, but if you start to increase that moment, you keep increasing and increasing and increasing until it fails, it fails under the bottom surface first. Yeah, okay. Because it's, it's always going to be larger, because this distance is always going to be larger. So the tension in the bottom half would be always larger.
So in the in this example, we are given the cross section says how much is the maximum moment we can put it. In this one says that okay, if this is the cross section, that moment how much tension we are gonna have. In the design, it's gonna be like that. This is the maximum moment you have. Find the dimension that can then can handle that moment. So we are not gonna do much of that here, but usually it's like that. So you get that moment, but the, those dimensions, all of them are unknown. So you have to play with this back and forth, back and forth, try and error. So you assume some number, you design it, and you check it to see if the tension is there or not. And you have to go back and forth until you get the dimension that 